What stopped you from committing suicide? The thought of never smoking weed again. My mom asking me to come home. My mom, dad and brother. Plus I didn't want someone to find my remains and have to deal with that. I refuse to do that to my kids. Duty, honor, love. Whatever you want to call it, I felt that responsibility was greater than anything I wanted. Alcohol. Got too drunk to be able to do anything else aside from barfing and sleeping. Not wanting my husband to have to be a single parent. I've battled depression for years, but the worst was when I had severe PPD after my oldest was born. I wasn't able to produce enough milk for him, he lost a full pound in his first four days of life, and had to go to the hospital. My brain spent weeks convincing me I was such a failure of a mother that I couldn't even do the one thing I should have been able to do for him and that he'd be better off without me. My husband was the epitome of a hero to me in that time. The only thing that kept me holding on was my husband's love and support for me and our baby. And I couldn't allow myself to repay his devotion by leaving him to continue on alone. Eventually, my brain mellowed out, even when the pain of not being enough continued. It hurt with our other two babies, but by then, I knew Fed is best, even when my stupid brain tried to trick me again. And he was by my side the whole way, making sure I knew I was enough. My cats. They wouldn't understand what happened if I was gone, not only that but when I was in the process of dying one of them came to me and was meowing so frantically I felt the need to comfort her which resulted in me puking up all the pills I had swallowed. Now every time I think about doing it again I just think of them. The pain that I was going through is minuscule compared to the pain others would feel from my passing. My family's support. Thought of not having my cats. My dog. For me I wasn't quite at the point of acting on my plan. But I had one. Painless, easy to execute, relatively foolproof. I worked at a dive shop, the place didn't pay enough to pay my bills. The debt from trying to make the job work was piling up, and everything seemed like there wasn't a way out. I'd started to put the pieces together in my head. Fill up a tank with 100% argon, no air, no oxygen. Put on a regulator and a full face mask. Seal. Breathe. In moments you'd pass out from hypoxia. Most people drift off or have a moment of impairment before drifting off. A few more minutes breathing that, and you're done for. Painless, easy, you fuck it up and maybe you're a vegetable but odds are you recover. And then a podcast played that usual warning if you or someone you love is having suicidal thoughts. I called the number, I reached out to people I knew could help, and I got out of that job eventually. It's been about six years since then, I have two kids I love to bits. I still have rough times, I know myself well enough to stay away from easy methods. But still. Sometimes it's hard. My cat. She hates most people but loves me, so I could never go out knowing she'd be alone. Plus, my family isn't a fan of cats, so they probably wouldn't give her much attention even if she wasn't aggressive. When I say she's aggressive, I mean she's fine most times but she has sent me to the hospital with six puncture wounds, and really, most of the times she's super sweet, so she doesn't deserve to be alone like that. My new girlfriend encouraged me to buy a puppy that a friend put up for sale. I was six months divorced, missing my daughter, and didn't have a lot of reason to push on. But then two new ladies came into my life and now, four years later, I couldn't be happier. Only one of them will lick the peanut butter off me though. The rope broke. Also my cat. Nowadays when I get to the point of making plans to do something, which is more often than I'd care to admit, I think about how my cat would react. She's very attached to me and doesn't like to eat when I'm gone so it would be very hard on her. Mom and Dad cut me down. A last ditch effort to improve my life at any cost, followed by years of dealing with the toxic relationships in my life and the toxicity those relationships spread in me, and also a healthy dose of good old fashioned stubbornness. Really, I just decided I needed to see my story out to a proper ending instead of an ending forced by rash decision made in a dark moment. 
fear of not doing it right and being worse off. Thinking about my parents finding out and possibly blaming themselves. The thought that something wasn't right mentally. Used to live in a big Canadian city, was on my way to work. Walked down to the subway platform, and I had a sudden urge to jump in front of the subway. Immediately I went to my doctor, he sent me to get tested. Been on antidepressants ever since. The very first thing that stopped me was I thought of my niece telling her school friends, my uncle was crazy. He killed himself. That was the start of a 16 plus year daily battle. My best friend. What if I fail? The hospital bill, family getting pissed, the judgment? Fuck that. Just waiting till 18. My kids. My dog, Abby. She was, and still is, always there for me. I thought about what would happen to her without me. No one would love her like I love her. No would spoil her enough or care for her enough. I need to be here for her. The way she's always here for me. So I stayed. And then I got Frida. And now with two dogs, I definitely know I ain't going nowhere. They give me life and because of them, it's now a good life. Knowing I'd still have to pay the karmic debt in the next one. And the impetus would be more intense next time around. My mom. She'd be so sad. And my cats wouldn't know what happened to me. Knowing what it would do to my dad. I want to see the HBO adaptation of The Last of Us. The thing keeping me going right now is that, someday, somewhere, I'm going to get put into a position where someone is going to need help and I would be the only one who can help them, if I'm not there for that person, who will be. The thing that stopped my attempt before, my mom walked in on it and I realized I can't have her lose another kid. My family. I'm not scared of dying, as I'm pretty sure whatever happens after death has to be better than this fucking hellscape we are living in now. I would have already killed myself if I wasn't so afraid of leaving my family behind. Especially my mom. I don't want her to have to go through that. My cats. I know if I am gone they will not get taken care of the way I have been taking care of them. I'm not perfect, but I do my best and try to give each three of them lots of attention every day aside from the mandatory litter slash food slash etc stuffs. The only person that would take them in is my mom. And while she loves them, she is not attentive. Plus she's not in good health. I don't want them ending up in a shelter possibly being killed or mistreated by new peoples. I don't know if I could trust my sister to rehome them if she couldn't keep them, her husband arbitrarily hates cats and might do something. I get really down sometimes and really just want to leave. But it always comes back to my kitties and the despair I feel knowing they'd be lost and neglected without me overwhelms whatever other dark thoughts I have. I know it might sound ridiculous to some people who don't bond with their animals. But I feel responsible for them, and I see them as family, not things I own. Realizing how much people would regret what they said and my mum and dad. It's permanent and there's a chance to survive. Also there's a chance I don't go immediately and now I have to deal with the pain and realization that I'm going to die. I would be in a lot of trouble if I failed or succeeded. Anyways tomorrow I'm 100 days sober from SH. The safety on the shotgun. 13 while I was hunting, haven't hunted anything in like 25 years. And like a responsible shooter, I had it on, and in the moment, forgot to disengage it. 39 now and no attempts since. Edit, I did pull the trigger. The sadness, terror, and relief after that, I can't even describe. My mom attempted suicide last year. Also the year before that. She is finally getting out of that dark place. She is smiling again, joking slash laughing again, eating again and leaving the house. The light is back in her eyes. If I killed myself surely she would follow. Suicide is not an option for me, even though at times it sounds like a solution. How disappointed my grown children would be of me. Fear, family. Still thinking about it to this day but I don't think I will ever have the guts to do it. When I was in middle school it was cause my mom had an unexpectedly come home earlier than she normally did and walked in on me about to do it. 
Now it's because I don't like pain and am too lazy to buy shotgun that would ensure it's fast and painless. You just can't find quality rope any nor. Fear of hell. I always tell people because I was raised religious I want to kill myself, long story, let me know if you wanna hear it all, but if I wasn't raised religious I would have been dead by 13. I got hungry. I was a teenager and was frustrated and fed up with life I had the knife to my wrist and then my stomach growled and I thought to myself eating something is more fun and easier than killing myself. I was pregnant with my son at 17 and was thinking about jumping out of my second story window but I didn't want to leave him without a mother although I had researched how long a baby can live inside of a deceased mom to make sure he will be found after I was gone. I had just found out that an ex of mine left me with a forever gift and was in the kitchen about to slip my wrist and I heard my son call my name and thought to myself that was dumb as hell no man is ever worth killing yourself although what he left me with was traumatizing I went to therapy and I am better now. I pray for those who are having those thoughts or going through situations where they feel like the world would be better off without them that is the furthest thing from the truth you are important you are here for a reason you are loved and valued.